Hey everyone, so we are here with Levi Tilleman, and uh, he's been on Rebel Headquarters before with Jank. He's a green energy op- entrepreneur running in Colorado's 6th district, and you have a bit of an interesting story uh, because you made a lot of headlines when Steny Hoyer, who's the minority whip in the House, number two under Nancy Pelosi, was caught essentially trying to push you out of the race, and you recorded him, became this huge news story. Um, and then after that broke, the DCCC kind of backed out of it and were like, no, we're not trying to push Levi out of the race because he was more progressive. It's because we had polling saying that you were going to lose, but now you've commissioned your own poll. And so breaking news today, uh, what have those uh, poll, resu- poll results shown? Well, first of all, the reason that we had to do this is because what we've seen, unfortunately, in our district is a pattern of deception from the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Um, They have chosen a candidate very early on. They've loaded him up with money and resources, and then they try to create a self-fulfilling prophecy. But a couple of weeks ago, I I guess it was last Sunday, Ben Ray Lujan, who's the chair of the DCCC, went on national public radio And he went a step too far by claiming that they had polling results that showed very clearly that the only person who could win in the 6th Congressional District was my Democratic opponent. That didn't resonate with what we were seeing on the ground. Um, What we saw is that people were ready for change, that people were still learning about me and still learning about my Democratic opponent. And we really felt that this was a race that was wide open. So we called on the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee and Congressman Ben Ray Lujan to release those polls that they were referencing. Uh, Those calls were met with silence. And we then decided to commission our own poll from the only polling entity that we know that has actually run a poll on um, my opponent versus Mike Kaufman. And what we found is very interesting. What we found is that my progressive background and My experience as a clean energy entrepreneur and someone who's worked for the Obama administration really resonated with voters and that I actually beat Mike Kaufman, the incumbent Republican, by a wider margin than the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee's chosen candidate. Yes, so that tells a very similar story to that of the most high profile candidate that the Democratic Party hated, Bernie Sanders, uh, who all polling showed that he would beat Trump and all the other Republicans by significant margins, but yet the Democratic establishment attempted to push him out of the race. You are also for Medicare for all. You are also for a living wage. You are also for green energy. So safe to say your platform is more in line with the Sanders campaign than that of your opponent. Yes, and and I think the challenge here is that the Democrats keep running to the center while the Republicans keep sidestepping to the right. And what that means is that the entire country is being dragged rightward. What we see through this poll is that people don't want someone who is going to race to the bottom or run to the center. They want someone who is going to stand up and fight for something. And that's what we've done this entire campaign. I'm fighting for Medicare for all, fighting for a $15 minimum wage, uh, fighting for free college for middle and working class Americans, and for a full transition to renewable energy by 2035. So I like how you kind of called the DCCC's bluff because they were essentially banking on the fact that you, as in your campaign, couldn't afford to do your own internal polling because it's quite expensive. But what would you say to the people that are skeptical of these results because your own campaign commissioned the poll? There, there can be misleading things that are done by campaigns and wouldn't be the first time. Yes, we've seen a chorus of uh, people questioning the results of the campaign. Um, people who, by the way, weren't too interested in questioning Ben Ray Lujan when he refused to release the results of his, uh, what I would say is really a slander against our campaign, saying that their candidate was far and away the only candidate who could win. And so what this is, is Um, selective questioning, selective analysis. It seems like a number of these people have um, gotten a PhD in statistics in the last seven days since Ben Ray Lujan made his comments. I will also say that the firm that we commissioned to do this poll is a, a very highly regarded polling firm. And it's the same firm that did the poll for our Democratic opponent. 
Right, so uh, you would be open to releasing the results really in full just to make sure that the veracity of them is confirmed by the very skeptical people in the public? We will release those results eventually, um, but pulling data is valuable. And we are not a big budget campaign. Our opponent has been loaded up with $1.4 million from Democratic insiders and from Washington dealers. And uh, he also has public, um, he, has, he has groups that are special interest groups that are willing to run polls for him and pay for those polls. And we don't have that same luxury. And so we can't just release all of our valuable data immediately. We have to use that data. We have to make sure that tactically we're positioning ourselves to win the primary. But we will release all of the data eventually. Got it. So let's talk a little bit more about your opponent since you brought him up in the primary, Jason Crow. Uh, your uh, primary is on June 26, same as New York and a variety of other uh, places are having their primary. Uh, Colorado is a very interesting state because it's really trended way more blue, yet there's still the DCCC is treating it like a purple state in the sense that all of these centrists have to represent uh, represent the state even on the Senate level as well and it seems like more and more young people are moving to Colorado it's becoming a much more youthful more progressive state again like you said your your district was heavily leaning towards Bernie Sanders and voted for him uh, why do you think the DCCC is interfering here I, I would also say that they've done a similar thing in Texas which is trending more towards purple and they've been actively interfering with Laura Moser uh, another progressive running there. It's why are they trying to stymie the trend of uh, these states moving more and more blue, more and more progressive? I, I, it's a bit of a leading question, but <laughs> well, I, I think part of it is that the DCCC wants candidates who will line up behind their agenda, and their agenda is not our agenda. It's not my agenda, and it's not the agenda of the progressive movements. And so that's the first thing. And then I think that the the second issue is the DCCC has a formula, which is their formula for victory, but unfortunately it's a losing formula. Um, they believe that the only thing that matters is money and how much money you can raise. But they go a step further. They create self-fulfilling prophecies where they load candidates up with money secretly behind the curtains, and then they pull back the curtain and they say, look, this candidate has done such a good job raising money we are choosing to endorse him or put him in our red to blue program. Um, so I think at, at the end of the day, it's, it's really that they, they are part of Washington. They are part of the Washington insider crowd, and they want someone who will play ball with them. They don't like people who are independent minded. And they didn't like you recording your conversation. So Steny Hoyer really pushed back publicly and Nancy Pelosi came to defend him basically completely deflecting and saying that the conversation shouldn't have been recorded without even discussing the substance of the conversation. Uh, That's right. Very misleading tactic. Can you touch on what Nancy Pelosi said in public uh, to the press? Well, the outrage here should be regarding the DCCC and Steny Hoyer and, quite frankly, my Democratic opponents trying to deceive the voters of the 6th Congressional District. Um, yes, I broke decorum and I recorded the conversation with Steny Hoyer, but Steny Hoyer was working to undermine democracy in our sixth congressional district. And the DCCC had been colluding privately with my Democratic opponents and, and lying about that all summer long. And so I, I feel that, uh, first of all, we know that the legality of what I did um, is absolute. We're a, a single party consent state in Colorado, which means if one individual has knowledge that the conversation is being recorded, then it is legal to record. And secondly, uh, the ethics are, we believe, very, <laughs> very defensible as well. Um, I am looking at my loyalty to democracy with a small d, not to the Democratic Party with a big D when I make these decisions. And that is what I will fight for. We're going to fight for truth. We're going to fight for justice. We're going to fight for democracy. And I happen to be a Democrat because most of my values align with the Democratic Party. But when I see them doing something wrong, I will call them out. 
you mentioned another D there, which was decorum. And mm-hmm. I guess this brings me towards the end of our conversation where a bit of a sidestep, but what I've seen after the White House Correspondents' Dinner was the establishment is quite concerned with decorum and uh, basically not offending everyone else in the establishment. That's much more of an outrage to them than actual policy goals, which is why they were so flabbergasted that you would dare to record a conversation with the number two Democrat in the House because it violated their decorum. How would you violate the decorum of uh, of Washington? Because honestly, I feel like that would be a plus to many of your constituents. Well, we're going to call the balls and strikes as we see them. Uh, we're going to get out of this partisan mindset, which is destroying Washington, D.C. And as I just said, we're going to fight for truth. We're going to fight for justice. We're going to fight for our values and we're going to fight for democracy. And if we do that, we will win in November. That's all the Democrats have to do to beat the Republicans all the way to 2018. I mean, it is it is it is not a heavy lift with Donald Trump as our president and a Republican Congress run amok to have a blue wave sweep over Washington. But the DCCC is going to blow it if they don't stop with their insider games and their meddling in local elections. And actually, lastly, I know I said lastly last time, but uh, would you like to give the DCCC, the DCCC a word of thanks uh, for giving you all this free publicity? Well, I think we've made lemonade out of lemons. Right. Um, they've, <laughs> they've been weighing in against us pretty hard, but uh, we are a resilient campaign. We are an innovative campaign, and we will take whatever situation we're presented with and turn it to the benefit of the American people, and that's what we're working on right now. Thank you so much. Uh, and Levi's primary is on June 26th, endorsed by Our Revolution true door-knocking progressive uh, going up against the establishment. Thanks so much for talking to me. Thanks for your time.